Hello everyone, I am Vyomay Singh from geek for geeks I am your mentor for operating session. And in this video, we are going to study CPU scheduling. Guys, CPU scheduling is very very important topic with respect to any competitive exam. If that exam is related to computer science. Either it is gate computer science exam, either it is net exam, either it is ISRO exam or even any PSU exam. And if you are going for university exam, at that time also CPU scheduling question will be there. Yes, CPU scheduling will be asked anywhere or everywhere. So first let me tell you it is very important as well as it is very easy topic. Yes, it is very easy topic. If you just watch our video and solve previous year question. I am not asking you to solve all the question, but I would suggest at least solve two question based on each and every algorithm. Then you will able to solve your gate question based on CPU scheduling. And mark my word, 90% of time there is a question in gate exam from CPU scheduling algorithm so first of all let me tell you what is cpu scheduling algorithm and why do we need it fine so let's start guys uh, in a single processor system only one process can run at a time any other process must wait until cpu is free or can be rescheduled fine so guys first of all we most of the time talk about uni processor system only why because in gate syllabus in net syllabus in our university exams mostly the syllabus consist only uni processor system there is only one question based on the multiprocessor system which is what is multiprocessor system tell us about the working of the multiprocessor system all the concept we study only with respect to uni processor system in our any exam till now fine so we know there is only one process can run on cpu at any instance we also employ multi programming but that doesn't mean that many process are running simultaneously on the cpu it create a glimpse that many process are running but in actual in reality there is only one process can run on cpu at any particular time so we already studied that there are two kind of system one is simple batch system or non multi programming system and multi programming system fine what we do in non multi programming system once cpu is allotted to any process it can't be allocated to any other process until a process complete a task are you understanding my point while a process need to do many tasks we have studied process states fine so there we have studied that a process need to do some cpu related task as well as it need to do some io related task or it need to wait for some event but in non multi programming system all the process need to wait unless and until that process terminate or it complete a task fine so th all the time when that process is waiting for some event or doing some input output related task at that time cpu is idle so time is wasted cpu is not serving any process that time so that is the problem in non multi programming system fine now in multi programming system we try to use this time productively i hope you have seen my video of multi programming what is multi programming fine if you have already seen that video then it is quite easy for you several process are kept in a ready queue fine in if a process comes in the main memory that means the process is in ready queue fine when a process has to wait the operating system take the cpu away from that process that means if a process is waiting for some event or it is 
waiting for some IO related task. At that time, operating system allot the CPU to some other process from the ready queue. Fine. So that is multi programming system. And when that new process goes to the waiting stage or blocked stage, then operating system pick new process from ready queue. Fine. So operate CPU will never be idle in multi programming. Every time one process leave the CPU, another process can take over the CPU or another process can run on the CPU. Now, by switching the CPU among processes, the operating system can make computer more productive. How? Because CPU is never idle in this case. Because whenever a process is leaving the CPU and going to the wait or block state at that time, new process can run on the CPU. Fine. So CPU scheduling is the basis of multi programming operating system. Here I have told you that multi programming is used to increase the productivity of the computer system. And here I am telling you that CPU scheduling is the basis of multi programming operating system. What that means CPU scheduling is closely related to computer system productivity. Now let me explain the same thing with the help of process state transition diagram. We are not taking any state which is not in the main memory except the terminated state. There is a ready queue in multi programming system. That means there are more than one process in the ready queue. Suppose in our case, there are P1, P2, P3, P4 process in the ready queue. Fine. Now, there should be some method to pick a process. Which process need to pick from ready queue? Fine. So, CPU scheduling algorithm decide that which process will be selected and get the CPU because CPU is most expensive resource, right? So CPU is major or more main resource of any system. So what is the task of CPU scheduling algorithm to select a process which can run on CPU. There is dispatcher also because dispatcher is responsible for loading the new process and unloading the running process. Fine. So that is the difference between scheduling and dispatching. Now, in single process system, now let me tell you when we need to do CPU scheduling or when operating system need to do a CPU scheduling. First case is when a process completes, suppose P1 comes and get the CPU in our case. Fine. Now P1 completed task and as soon as it goes to the exit state, that means it complete its execution. At that time, CPU is idle. That means new process need to bring in and that process will get the CPU. Now there are three process P2, P3, P4. Now CPU scheduling algorithm will select one process from the ready queue. So that is our first case where operating system need to decide or need to run the CPU scheduling algorithm. Fine. So in our second case, when a process goes from running state to waiting state, that's I have told you that is the main reason of our multi programming, right? Whenever a process goes from running state to waiting state or blocked state that means cpu is idle suppose p2 was running at that time and p2 need to wait for some event or some io related task in that case p2 will leave the cpu fine and go into the waiting queue now p2 is in the waiting queue we have another two processes p3 and p4 waiting in the ready queue Fine. So, which process will get the CPU? 
it will be decided by the CPU scheduling algorithm and that means operating system need to run the CPU scheduling algorithm whenever a running process goes from running state to waiting state. Now suppose in my case CPU scheduling algorithm or CPU scheduler pick process P4 now instead of P3. Fine. So there might be another chance when CPU scheduling algorithm need to run when a process goes from running state to ready state. Now a process is running right now. Suppose in our case P4 is running. So it is not in ready queue now. And suppose a new process arrives in the ready queue P5 and it is has very high priority. In that case, it can preempt the running process or it can interrupt the running process. In that case, the running process will go back to the ready queue and high priority process will get the CPU. I have used the term a process goes from the running state to ready state instead of interrupt or instead of high priority because interruption can be happen because of two reasons. One is from the high priority. Another reason is the time quantum. Fine. If all the process got the a certain amount of time suppose this process go, gets only three seconds of cpu time that means after three seconds it will be interrupted fine so next process will get the cpu so here in any case either because of uh, time or priority the two reason are there either because of time quantum or priority this process running process is interrupted that means it will go back to the ready queue now the running now cpu scheduling algorithm need to be run by operating system and it will pick one process from the ready queue suppose this time it is taking p5 because it is the high priority process fine now there is one more case when operating system need to decide which process need to run our operating system how operating system decide by the cpu scheduling now last one is when a process goes from the waiting state to ready state now you might be thinking why is this case why if a process is going from the waiting state to ready state why do we need to run the cpu scheduling let me tell you suppose p5 come uh, goes from running state to waiting state so here p5 comes and now again p4 is running here fine p4 is running here again and at that time after some time p5 complete its io related task that means p5 will go back to the ready state from waiting state no process can directly go to the running state first they need to go to the ready queue so p5 as soon as p5 goes back to the ready queue that means it is higher priority than the p4 in our previous case as well so as soon as any process goes from waiting state to ready state cpu scheduler check the priority of that process if the process is if the process has the high priority that means running process need to be interrupted and it will go back to the ready queue again and that high priority process will get the cpu i hope you understood all four decision criteria fine only on these four cases cpu scheduling algorithm need to be run or implemented by the operating system and what is the major task of the cpu scheduling algorithm there is only one task of the cpu scheduling algorithm to select one process from the ready queue and that selected process will get the CPU and loading and unloading of the process or context switching is done by the dispatcher. Fine. I hope you understood my point. Now let me tell you what kind of CPU scheduling algorithm we have. There are first come first serve, then priority based and there is a concept of non preemptive and preemptive as well. Let me tell you uh, in brief whenever running process interrupted wide running and new process get the CPU, this situation is known as the preemptive. Fine. 
if a running process cannot be interrupted by any high priority process unless until it voluntarily relieve the cpu then it is known as the non preemptive cpu scheduling algorithm i will discuss this in detail in the, my next video right now you just need to understand uh, in preemptive scheduling a process can be interrupted at the time of running in non preemptive a process cannot be forced to release the cpu but in the preemptive scheduling a running process can be forced to release the cpu fine so there are basically two kind of cpu scheduling algorithm one is non preemptive and another and another one is preemptive non preemptive or very simplest algorithm is known as the first come first serve now we have priority based cpu scheduling algorithm which can be implemented in both way non preemptive as well as the pre preemptive algorithm next is sorted job first it is non preemptive and its preemptive version is known as the sorted remaining time first fine next is the longest job first it is non preemptive and its preemptive version is known as the longest remaining time first sometime in the exam it is given longest remaining time first or shortest remaining time first and sometime it is given as longest job first bracket mein preemptive or shortest job first preemptive that means it they are asking about preemptive version of shortest job first and longest job first and last one is the round robin which is the implemented by most of the operating system and it is also responsible for the multi tasking fine so thank you guys i hope you understood what i want to convey or what we what is the cpu scheduling why do we need it when operating system take decision which process need to be picked fine there are the four criteria or four situation where operating system need to decide which process need to be selected and whenever a operating system need to decide that means at that time operating system need to implement or need to run cpu scheduling algorithm fine in the next video we are going to study preemptive and non preemptive cpu scheduling algorithm as well as what is cpu bus and io bus i hope you got the idea of both of them but i would suggest watch at least 3 4 video and then you will realize that it is pretty simple or cpu scheduling is a scoring topic and you can complete all the cpu scheduling algorithm either in one setting or maximum in two setting guys and i would suggest you complete of cpu scheduling only in one go fine only in one go you can complete all the cpu cpu scheduling algorithm you can understand that and after that you can solve some previous year question by yourself or there is another way you can uh, study two three or four cpu scheduling algorithm at a time and then solve the previous year question then study some more cpu scheduling algorithm it's totally up to you but i would suggest please complete the cpu scheduling algorithm in two days because in the gate time matters we need to complete the subjects very fast and we need to understand the subject very deeply guys don't forget we need to have understanding of each and every subject we need not to just read the subject overview we need to go thoroughly fine so this is all for this video in the next video we are going to discuss cpu and io bust as well as preemptive and non preemptive cpu scheduling algorithm so thank you guys thank you very much